Joining us now is Ojinika Oji Okwe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinex. Good morning, Good morning. Dr. Abati. How are you this morning? I'm good. Good morning, Rufai. Good morning, Jinex. Great. Excellent. Well, good morning to you viewers. Let's begin what's trending. With reactions trailing the joint session of the National Assembly on Wednesday, where President Bola Ahmed Tinbu presented the 2024 budget proposal of 27.5 trillion naira. While many Nigerians have expressed concern about the projected expenditure of the budget, Senate President Godswill Akpabio assured the President that lawmakers will consider the budget. Akpabio, however, advised the President not to allow his cabinet members travel when they're expected to defend the budget at the National Assembly. We assure you that the proposals you have come to present to us will be diligently considered accordingly. We approve this moment with a sense of duty unity and purpose, to ensure maximum attention to the review of the year 2023 budget performance and the consideration of the year 2024 budget SMS. We request Mr. President would mandate all ministers and his agencies to avoid foreign travels during this period of our engagements with them. That will prevent them from dishonoring the invitation of the chambers of the National Assembly. They will promptly appear before our committees to defend their budget SMS. We will not want to wait for them. Otherwise, we will lose time. And time is not on our hands. All right. Akpavio says he wants the ministers around. He wants them not to travel. Otherwise, they will lose time. I mean, this is a concern for a lot of Nigerians because people are saying, I mean, he wants to pass this budget so quickly. But however, after that uh, budget proposal, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu traveled to Dubai for COP28 for the climate summit, which is themed Unite, Act and Deliver. There he'll discuss the severe impact of climate change on Nigeria. And you know that, you know, we have a lot of issues with flooding as well as erosion, drought and national security. You know, the president obviously must have traveled with senior delegates for that uh, uh, summit. We don't know who they are. We don't know the ministers. I know that the Minister of Environment will be there, as well as Minister of Foreign Affairs. But another reaction trailing the joint session of the National Assembly was a song of allegiance. On your mandate, we shall stand, which was used to usher in President Bola Ahmed Tinubu before he presented the budget. Well, let's take a listen before we come back for a discussion. So distinguished colleagues, and honorable members, let us at this point welcome the president, a man with track record, an alumnus of the National Assembly, to present his budget estimates. Can we give him a resounding applause? Let's take some reactions. This is the big wig. His tweet reads, National Assembly singing for Tinubu. We have witnessed rubber stamp Senate under Ahmed Lawan. But this God's will Akpabio Senate is a collection of hype men. He has moved from wearing Tinubu's insignia cap to on your mandate hyperlord right on the floor of the Senate. Every well-meaning Nigerian must condemn this rendition of Tinubu's campaign tune in the National Assembly chamber, an evidence of outright totalitarianism. Dr. Abati. I agree with, uh, what do you call that person? Big, big wig. Big wig. Big oh, wig. Is, that, is that a name? Yes. Okay. Oh, but in, a, but yeah. in any case, what you say makes sense. Big wig sense. Austin. His name is Austin. This is how it starts. Mm -hmm. Hero worship. Yes. Yeah, so this is how parliaments in Africa 
turn their presidents into dictators. The National Assembly of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, if we check both chambers, both red and green, it's a collection of members from different political parties. Labour Party is there, PDP is there, uh, APGA is there, you know, other political parties are there. So it's, it, it's a place for lawmaking, for good governance, an oversight assembly. This kind of open psychophancy is, uh, is primitive, if I may use that word. On your mandate we stand is the slogan, is the song, you know, for the APC. Right. So the APC cannot hijack a, 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 a bipartisan uh, national assembly, you know, uh, uh, where there are other political parties representing the interests of Nigerians. And if you look at the result of the election, it's not every Nigerian that is standing on the mandate of uh, President Tinubu. When the president arrives at an occasion, the appropriate thing to play is the national anthem. Correct. And I hope that uh, these uh, lawmakers are not going to pursue the idiocy of uh, playing uh, APC song at uh, public events. The recognized song in Nigeria is the national anthem. If they want, and a, uh, the presentation of the budget before the National Assembly is a national occasion, not an APC occasion. So that's, uh, you know, something uh, to be uh, really condemned. Now, what's the first leg of the story before we, this? We talked about the ministers. Uh, the the ministers not traveling. Okay. The president asked the, uh, the National Assembly, the leadership of the National Assembly, to pass the bill uh, expeditiously. And I guess that is within the context of the plan by the government to keep to the old budget cycle of January to December, you know, so that it's not as we used to have it in the past. You now have to run the old budget till, you know, almost half of the year. So I think that in itself makes sense. If the National Assembly is now saying, well, due to the harmonious relationship that we have, we will pass the budget uh, very quickly. But they are saying ministers should not travel, heads of uh, ministries and departments and agencies should not travel, because they will be required, of course, to come and defend some of the line items and explain, mm. and to prevent a situation whereby these lawmakers will write themselves into the Appropriation uh, Act yes, of uh, Nigeria. Pardon. So it's important that those uh, heads of MDAs also show up. However, if there is proper coordination, I say coordination, I'm not saying the uh, legislature should take directives from the executive. If there's proper coordination, if any minister has a compelling reason to travel, the National Assembly will have been informed, and everything can be very smooth. But the more important point is that the National Assembly has an obligation to do due diligence, not to use that budget to fund luxury. Mm -hmm. Nigerians don't expect that they will start uh, importing luxury items, luxury uh, subheads into that uh, or constituency projects for their own, uh, uh, you know, uh, interest. But otherwise, the senior president made a number of points about the need to reduce the debt uh, burden, the need to prioritize education, the need for diversifying the economy, the need for Nigeria to stop over dependence on uh, crude oil, and his point about you know, how to unbundle some offices, particularly ministries and agencies, either to scrap some or join some. What he needed to say, really, is that the Tinubu government must summon the courage to implement the Onosaya report, which has been on the, on the table since, so that we can plug the wastages and leakages that Akpabio was talking about. So those are the more important points that he made. But we do not expect that this show of psychophancy <laughs> will continue and know that that psychophancy on your mandate will stand. Yes. They've already passed the budget before even looking at it. All right. Rufa, if you recall, I mean, I did take this story where, you know, Tinubu had this fake meeting and yeah. they played this actual tune. But I said it was because he had just uh, been announced or affirmed president of Nigeria. You know, he was in a group of his people and they had to play that tune. However, it's not the first time, Dr. Abati, you are saying that they shouldn't play it in public. If you recall, during the Niger crisis, I know that the president is the ECOWAS chair, they played the same song of allegiance there. 
the allegiance should be to the constitution. I mean, not to an individual. Dr. Rufa is. Uh, I'm blown here this yeah. morning because. Go ahead. God help me. At first, shame on all our National Assembly members that were seated there where another song of allegiance were played. Shame. And if we truly had a country, if we truly had a republic, by now, those in their constituency should be sending them letters to show how disgruntled they are, and if possible, recalling them. It is that bad. We are losing the country with psycho fancy. But it's not only to know. It happened during Buhari's administration. Remember how people were wearing Buhari's insignia on their body? Now everybody's wearing his cap and all of them. What level of madness have we got into in this country? It's a whole new level of madness. What level of madness are we doing? At the hollow chamber? By playing that song, a partisan song, they desecrated the hollow chamber. And they must account for it. Let's go back history. Do you know what caused the first English civil war? The king tried to overreach himself in the parliament and the parliamentarians kicked against it. King Charles I. It led to the emergence of Oliver Cromwell, the Lord Protector of England. The parliament is for the people. The people of Nigeria. Parlement. The meaning of the parliament is parlement. To speak on behalf of the people. Not to do political sentiment and hypocrisy. Or listen to songs of allegiance post to a certain political party. And there were some other lawmakers there they couldn't talk. How would they be able to talk? If we were telling Labour Party lawmakers. When they were part of those that collected the 160 million for cars. Will they have the nerve to speak? We're telling lawmakers from other parties to discountenance that they didn't do it. But how will they be able to talk? Oh, we are. forget Everyone's in a hurry, Oji. We forget that there are three co-equal arms of government in this country. The judiciary, the legislature, and the executive. President Tinubu is the head of one equal arm, the executive. The legislature has the head of his own arm. But we have a legislator that don't even know themselves. And they are cartoying to the executive. They are worse than copy and paste now. They are worse than robber. They are hype men, as big we call them. Hype men. So shame on all of them for not understanding that they are a co-equal arm of government in this country. And they are singing an allegiance song mm -hmm. Well, all right. to well, the executive. You can, see, you can see where we've, we've started. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was important <laughs> to highlight it. We don't need a hype men at the National Assembly. But we'll take another story. The Kogi state governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Dino Malaya on Wednesday, announced that he will not challenge the electoral victory of the All Progressives Congress before the state election petition tribunal. Malaya, who came third in the election, alleged that the judiciary is no longer independent but a department of the APC and called on all opposition political parties of Nigeria to boycott all future elections until the current INEC constituted by APC members is dissolved. Let's take a listen. I hereby call on all political parties to boycott future elections in this country until Mahmoud Yakubu and the corrupt commissioners of INEC are completely dissolved and a new credible INEC constituted. That is when we can have democracy. If we fail to do that, participation by political parties will mean uh, legitimizing, endorsing, and promoting the illegality that is ongoing. So I call on all political parties to boycott future elections and allow them to run a one-party state because our non-participation will definitely give, will, will, will definitely deny them the legitimacy they need to carry on. Well, I think that uh, Dino Malaya is right on one score. If you recall yesterday, there was that uh, Citizens Town Hall, was it on mm. Tuesday, where uh, the former INEC chair called for the unbundling of INEC. Uh, Dr. Abati. Well, but I think the bigger point that Dino Malaya was making would be his attack on the judiciary. He says that Nigerians have lost trust and mm -hmm. confidence in the judiciary and he went ahead to label the Nigerian judiciary. He says the judiciary in Nigeria now is an arm of the APC, a wing of the ruling party or progressives uh, congress. Well, I think that's a bit uh, on the very harsh side, but he expresses the sentiment of many others who seem to have lost faith in the judiciary. 
including members of, you know, generally of the opposition uh, party. Uh, he also criticized uh, INEC, mm -hmm. that INEC under uh, uh, Professor Yakub Mahmoud, you know, has also lost uh, any claim uh, to independence. And he cited the fact that in uh, Kogi State, pre-field resource sheets were seen even before election took place. And that's the specific thing that happened in Oguri Mangongo, uh, local government area, where in about uh, nine out of the major polling units, you know, results had been released even before people left their homes. And you recall that in that November 11 election uh, in, uh, in Kogi State, five local government areas had their, you know, election uh, uh, cancelled and they had to have a rerun in those uh, uh, those areas of Okene, Adavi, Ugurimagungu, Ajaukuta, you know, so that was what happened. He was referring to that. But more importantly, he's saying that INEC should be dissolved. Yes, I thought that was the most And you are right. Yeah. It came up at the Citizens' uh, mm -hmm. Town Hall meeting organized by IAGA along with the Joint Committee of the National Assembly on, uh, on uh, election matters, okay? Because people are worried about the true independence of INEC. So they are saying... You can't have an electoral body that is supposed to be an unbiased umpire populated by partisan members we, of the ruling party. We have to and emphasize you can't get that this fairness. is the most important So this thing. is part of the electoral reform yeah. process. But let's just put it on record that he came third. And the margin of lead <laughs> between Usman Ododo and uh, his good self, and even Ajaka yeah. uh, of the SDP who okay. came second, the margin of lead is so wide. Yeah. So uh, apart from all those basic points that uh, Dino Melayemi is also being very pragmatic. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, with that the number not, of votes, yeah. how many votes did he get? 75,000. <laughs> That's not going to challenge the, yeah. the margin no is so need. wide, <laughs> there's no need. And then, of course, you know, it's not cheap yeah. to go and recruit lawyers no. and uh, go to the tribunal. The logistics involved, the finances involved. I saw somebody say he has settled with the judge. He was not going to pay his yes. lawyer. No, yeah. <laughs> you know, when you recruit a lawyer to go and represent you, you must pay. <laughs> a liberal deserves his wages. Absolutely. So maybe the pragmatism for Dino Mela is look, let me not waste money for that. Yeah. But, but that's, that's on the latter. Absolutely, I that's know. I love that. But as the I, opposition, I mean, he has to keep speaking. Rufai, you wanted to say something? I, I, so, so I, yeah, we can love all we want, but what Mr. Dino Melaya has said is so important. Yes, we have to continue. And to as continue. far as I'm concerned, we are joking. I will just say this again quickly. If President Tinubu can truly abide by the Waze report by removing his hand and the hand of the president from whoever picks those in INEC, I will celebrate him every day when he does that. Fantastic. But I dare him to do that. All right. I, I want him to do that. But we hardly see that because as far as I'm concerned, will you call what happened in Kogi elections? Ele results were written before the... Well, all right. Please, yeah. Well said. We'll take another story then. Highlighting Rhoda Jatau, a Christian woman who has been detained for 18 months in Bauchi State for allegedly protesting the gruesome murder of Deborah Samuel, a 200-level student of Shehu Shagari College of Education in Sokoto State, who was set ablaze last year by Islamic extremists after she advised her classmates not to post religious materials on a WhatsApp group page. Rhoda Jatau, a mother of five children, reportedly posted a video condemning the act. She was said to have been arrested and charged with inciting public disturbance, contempt of religious creed, and cyber stalking under the Penal Code and the Cyber Crime Prevention Act. Many users on social media have used the hashtag Free Rhoda to demand for her release. Let's take this tweet from Chijo K, who wrote Free Rhoda. Jatau. Nigerian Constitution Chapter 4, Section 39, guarantees freedom of expression. Rhoda has done no wrong. She exercised her rights as a Nigerian citizen. Our Constitution does not recognize Sharia law. President of Khan, do the needful and stop this madness. I mean, Dr. Vati, this story has been going on for almost 18 months. We have not heard of the persecution of those two people that were detained, I mean, back in 2022. Only two people. 
that were called in this whole mess. We saw that video of Deborah uh, Samuel. I mean, it is unheard of that this whole idea of clamping down on the freedom of speech is happening in Nigeria, Dr. Bati. Well, it's not just uh, freedom of speech that is the issue. It's also freedom of uh, uh, religion, thought, yes. and conscience, as guaranteed under Section 38 of the 1999 Constitution. And uh, I saw a piece by a gentleman who is with the Christian Solidarity International complaining about how there is religious persecution in Nigeria. and People just get killed unnecessarily for religious reasons, particularly in those 12 northern states that have embraced the Islamic Sharia law. Deborah Yakubu, that you refer to, the student of Shehu Shagari uh, uh, College in Sokoto State, two of the people who set her ablaze for religious reasons, on the grounds of blas blasphemy, blasphemy. Yeah. they were taken to court. But you know that uh, <laughs> the police... The uh, so-called police that was trying the case <coughs> did not show up during the trial. So it got so bad that they were freed. And the case was closed. That's it. The same thing with uh, uh, Bridget uh, Agbayime, who was also killed for religious reasons. He gave blasphemy. Do you know that uh, the, the Kano state government, in his own case, in our own case, said, oh, we will make sure justice is done. But do you know that later, it was the same kind of state government that entered the Nolet Prosecuit. Once they entered the Nolet Prosecuit, the case was dismissed. The people who killed her, they were set free. There is also the case of Gideon Akaluka. So it's not just about religious persecution. It's also about the failure of the state. Yes. Where religion is concerned, you will see that they will not do anything. In the case of this lady, Ruda, 45 years old, she has a five, five or six children. Now, the trial has been on for the past one year. Mm -hmm. The court has refused to grant her bail, an offense that is clearly a bailable offense, just because she wrote something on WhatsApp. And then she, she advising people not to be posting religious uh, uh, materials. And then this woman has been in jail. Completely a violation, unacceptable. A violation of her rights. Yes. So I think we should uh, join others in appealing to the Bauchi State Authority yes. to ensure that Rhoda Jatau is released. Yes. She's been denied a right as a mother, a right as a citizen. If she has committed an offense, as they claim, under uh, the Cyber Crime Act, uh, Section 1, of which uh, talks about cyber stalk stalking and uh, using the social media to incite people and all that, uh, let them take her to court, grant her bill, and do due process. But now that the matter is before the court, we hope that the court too has a responsibility, mm -hmm. whether it's a magistrate court or a Sharia court, has a responsibility to defend her rights and to ensure that she's given the right to fair hearing. Absolutely. Because that is what is guaranteed under sections 35 and 36 of the 1999 Constitution. Absolutely. With due respect, Oji, I think we as a people and the state support the stifling of religious voices, that's why it continues. Dr. Abati, one part you did not say about what happened in Deborah's case was the religious violence that ensued after the killing of Deborah. And Sokoto was on fire. Mm. Pastor Kuka's church was damaged. What did the state do about it? Nothing. A lot more harm happened to people that period nothing the people were left to go just like that so except the states starts with education and strongly enforcing those laws nothing will happen mm -hmm. you also remember the case of Eunice Olawali that her only offense was she was moving around preaching the gospel and all of that so we have a state or states that support it and except we change and with all of the standard constitutions to grow law in this country, and based on the laws of Nigeria, Dr. Bati, you are a lawyer that I respect so much. Is Nigeria a religious state? It's not a Sharia No, state. Section, 10, section 10 of the Constitution forbids the Nigerian government adopting any religion, and any state religion, religion so there or is, in any part of the federation. So there's no state religion in Nigeria, because I just wanted Dr. Bati to echo it, that as long as we don't have a state religion, and people are being hurt in the name of religion. Unacceptable. We must be allowed <laughs> to express 
a freedom of religion and free speech. Free Rhoda Patel. This is a call to the Bauchi state government. I'd like to thank you both for your great analysis, as always, on what's trending. Thank you. Well, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.